are we up to today? Well, this rough squirrel was rather unfortunate yesterday to run under the car. It's quite a big beast, as you see, a fat old squirrel. Tail's just all right, but it's quite a lump of an animal. Um, male. And uh, I thought I'd mount him up for you because um, the other one that I did is only in single shots and I've had quite a few questions about the details of this. And you might be wondering why I've got a teddy bear on here. No, we're not now making teddy bears and stuffing teddy bears. The thing is that the teddy bears are a very good supply of cheap glass eyes. And uh, we can get these for 30, 40 pence a piece in the uh, second hand shops, charity shops. For those of you that like me don't have much money, you see the eye on the squirrel here is large and black. And the eye on the teddy bear here is about the same, so we're not going to be far out. Otherwise we get a standard pack of eyes like this, they come like that, and they're wired up. So what you have is the eyes on a wire stem which you snip off so that you can push those into the foam head or wherever you're going to mount them. And uh, we paint the back of the eye there to give the correct colour for the animal. That's the other way of uh, getting them, but they're slightly more expensive that way. Glass or plastic. Notice that fish eyes also come with a slightly elliptical pupil, quite different to an ordinary animal's. Leave our eyes removed and ready for use. Let's run through what else we're going to need then on the table. We have our sodium borate, our borax, which you can get from any normal chemist or uh, pharmacy. And it is the powdered borax, what used to be known as washing soda. I will use a little bit of uh, formaldehyde, uh, mix it up to 50 to 1, it's quite strong enough, I've got 30 to 1 here. Again you can get it from a uh, chemist, but do be very careful with the stuff, it's very dangerous. And uh, Whereas the, uh, the boar wrap is not dangerous at all, but we will need a little bit for this job, just for the tail and things. And I need a syringe to put the formaldehyde in with, we'll need some fishing line and a needle, 6 pound line here, some wool a knitting needle to push the fiberglass wool that we're going to use down with, ordinary fiberglass wool from the loft insulation for helping to pad out. We need a bit of foam to build the head. We could build the body with it as well, but today I'm going to use some chicken wire and push this into shape uh, and bind it to make the body. I've got a little more movement in the body today to go onto my base, which I've already made. You see here my base is set up with a screw through the back there, just a slice of wood. Then we'll put some, some moss and bits and pieces over this later. We'll need some wire to set up the legs and arms and armature. Need some scissors, some pliers, and various scalpels. We've got large, medium and small here, and a pair of tweezers. And that's it, that's the basics. That's all we're going to need. But the first thing we're going to do then is to cut the squirrel open. Right, the first thing we want to do is to remove the uh, body of the squirrel and just have the skin left. So totally remove the body and the head and everything out from inside, <coughs> legs and all, tail as far as we can get it. We'll do that by starting at the tummy here. Open him up. We shan't be keeping the skull of this animal. What we need to do is uh, build a, a plastic head for that, a foam head. So we just find like we did with the pheasant, find the breastbone here. Just nick the skin. New scalpel blade soon, I think. Once we're in through the skin. There we go. Then work our way along it. And we'll go up this way, right up to the chin and down there, right to the tail. We don't want any mess, we don't want any smell, we don't want any blood everywhere, so we go carefully as we peel it. And get underneath. Prepare my borax ready for use. I'm going to need plenty of that. Nice powdered borax. Now the borax is not only to preserve, it also helps us get hold of the animal to prise the skin apart. So although it's quite dry at the moment, a bit damper later as we go along. Once we get the skin away from the body a bit it'll be easier. Peel it away. There we go. Get thumb underneath it. Get your thumbnails in there. We're not going to be eating this squirrel so I know people do eat squirrels but uh, 
not bothered about that so as soon as you can get a little bit of borax in there and rub it onto the skin get it inside this pouch you've made so you can get hold of the beast more easily and you're already starting to preserve it right so we'll just work away all the way down here now okay you can see now that we've got the skin being peeled away from the body and I'm constantly putting in borax in between to be able to prise the skin away from the body as we go right back and around and then we're going to reach in for the legs and do the same and gradually prise the legs out plenty of borax in there we've now got back around to the squirrel's leg here we've got the skin all the way around to the back of the animal pulling, peeling the skin back like a sock off your foot down the leg here using lots of borax to keep the grip you can see now I can actually get my finger through there so we've got the skin peeling back right down to the joint of the foot now at this stage you've got to work it right down to the elbow and if it won't come this is where you start to do some careful scalpel work mind your fingers but pull it one way like that and use a scalpel tip just to cut away the ligaments and tendons holding the skin down here for instance difficult to get at but here you can see this little bit holding it there it's got to cut away carefully and peel as you cut just inside and this is going to be the same for doing the tail we've got to cut down inside there without cutting the skin as we peel it back So it's quite a, a fine surgical, careful job. Peel it right back down the meat and then away we go again. It'll come again after that, look a bit more. Keep peeling down, keep peeling down, all the way, right down to the foot. Cut away those little areas that are holding the skin down to the, the leg. And then once again you can peel it away again. Careful not to tear the skin right off the foot. All the way down. Just inside that skin as it joins. Till you get right down to the foot. Put a bit of borax on it. It's hard to get hold of otherwise, and that will help to preserve it. You're going to be holding this back later and stuffing it with fiberglass wool so you want to make sure that there's plenty of the powder all over it's much easier for me now to get hold of that to pull it back a bit slippy otherwise this foot's just there so we're almost there thumbnail a bit more just to peel it back right that's got down to his foot so now we can just snip it off plenty of borax in there and I'm going to use a little bit of formaldehyde now just inside the foot just to be sure that I've got no problems later plenty of borax around there and we can fold that back out again now push it back through there's his foot again that's all done that's hollow right down to those toes now I've got to the other side 
Right, you see we've got that leg completely out, we've now worked around the back of the animal and we're doing the other back leg. Keep the borax going and peeling that back like a sock down. All the way down, over his, right over his knee again. Pull it down as far as you can. Keep the borax going. And when you can't get further, using your thumbnails, then you'll have to start carefully cutting away again at the sinews to release the skin. And pulling it back down bit by bit. Not a messy job really. All the mess is contained inside the animal. Now, a lot of people won't bother with this these days because this is the old fashioned way. This is the way that I was taught by a professional taxidermist in Suffolk in England. And nowadays, a lot of people use body formers. You buy the ready made animal in plastic foam, you just skin it like this, so it's still the same doing this bit, and then you uh, put the prepared animal across the body form. We're going to make our own bodies. We're doing it totally in the old-fashioned way, totally by hand. It's all our own work, not somebody else's. Now, because I'm doing it this way, I, I get a bit tired of people writing to me saying, can I do it another way? Yes, there are other ways to do taxidermy, as I said with the pheasant. Um, there are lots of other chemicals on the market now you can use uh, to preserve. Go to the taxidermist suppliers and look at what there is. Or pay another taxidermist, a professional, to show you. I'm not a professional, I'm just an amateur who does a little bit of this for his own pleasure because I don't like to see the animals just rot away and wasted. Um, and if we're going to eat something as well, might as well use the whole animal. Right, that's got that right the way down to the knuckle joint now. So we're ready to cut off there. So don't write to me and say, can I use uh, salt? Can I use this? Can I use that? There are other things you can use. Salt is not a good idea, no. Salt is a preservative, but it will attract wet and it will rot in the animal. Um, just this, is, this works. You can get these materials quite cheaply from any chemist or pharmacist by ordering them. But uh, just through sheer laziness, please don't keep writing to me saying, can I do this, that and the other. You're not going to save much money on it. It's only a few pence for the materials. And this, these boxes of materials last for a long, long time, many, many years. And also, Please read the questions and answers below the, uh, these films because many of your questions will have been asked before and it gets a bit tiresome having to reply to the same questions over and over again. If you do have a problem, of course write to me and I'll come back to you. I always do. But save me a bit of time as well. Eh? Right, here we go then, pulling the foot back through again. This is toe gone. There it is. So we've got plenty of borax in there and we've got the formaldehyde in there. Come on foot, that's it. Right, so that's his back legs completely done, finished. Now we've got to get the tail out. Now the tail is a bit more of a problem, but again, we're hopefully going to peel it back a bit like a sock still. So here we go again, get some borax onto it, plenty of the borax all the time, can't go wrong with that, and peel that back from his tail as far down as you can get. There we go, it's coming, look. Right down, use your thumbnails to get in there. Keep peeling. Shouldn't break off at this stage. Plenty borax. Now, if it starts to get tough, then, exactly as you did with the legs, you have to get in there and carefully cut away the sinew that's holding the skin on. I know some people have eaten squirrels, some people eat rats. In fact, the, the ratters in India they actually go around killing rats. Uh, most of their diet is on rat. And squirrels basically are only a tree rat, especially these grey squirrels from America. I do have a preference really for the little native red squirrel, but there's not many of those about now. There we go, look, pulling it right back down. The tail, that's it, and his tail's all the way out. You see how quickly that came out? So they will come completely out. There we are, that's his tail done. Now again, 
plenty of borax and what I'm going to do there is I can't get the borax right down into that I'm going to take my formaldehyde and actually actually inject that into there that needle and get them right down to the tail with it and actually fill that up with formaldehyde I don't have any problems with it potting later actually go in there as well find the skin put some in from that angle there we go okay we've got the tail out and we've uh, put some formaldehyde inside here and plenty of borax around the edge pull the tail back through again ready for the next procedure and now he's got to peel the skin back up over the rest of the animal so next we're going to do the the front legs and peel right up over the head again keep the borax going around any wet flesh to help grip it and peel it away from the meat now this process is basically the same for any animal you can do this on a a fox or a wolf or a but with a fox you'd normally cut from the back because you have a larger body former and you have to pull it right up over the feet in this case we're going to be able to push the legs through the smaller animal and we'll be able to manage so that's the only difference there but the actual skinning of it and putting the borax in you could do exactly the same with the fox skin although you would probably be wiser to actually buy a body former and the ear formers because the ears on a fox need pieces of plastic to go inside as well and so on but we could build it your own just just the same way get through here get hold of all of these bits of skin plenty of borax all the way around and peel that right back get round the arm there get the skin right back over the shoulder you can see here you can get the finger right round in a minute we'll, we'll, we'll pull that off the leg completely look here we go and now I've got right through underneath there's my thumb coming through there and pull that skin down the arm just as we did with the back leg use your thumbnail as well keep the borax going because you can't get hold of it otherwise pull that down its foot down its leg to the front paw right down there there we go and now I'm right down to that paw I don't need to go any further I could cut further but I won't need to go any further because I've got down to that last joint You can leave the tiny finger bones inside. Not worried about that. Again, plenty of borax. And cut away the joint. Again, borax on the end. I won't need to put formaldehyde in that because there's very little left in there. We're on the other side now. Peel this arm out. Again, four racks. Turn it round so I can get at it. Pull that right back. Down to the joint. There we go. No smell of this. The only smell is the formaldehyde at the moment. Cut that off. That's that. Now the final job is just the skinning of the head. So again, go at it carefully. Peel it away with your fingers, pushing underneath between the two. Keep this powder going. What are you doing, dog? Oi! Behave. And see, we're coming down the neck now. We've got to start pulling this again like the sock back over the head and again we're going to have to start using the scalpel in a minute to get this over because we've got to skim this right down to the lips so we've got to go all the way down its head in this case 
a small scalpel and just carefully peel that away. Don't cut through the skin, just peel away the almost down to the eye there now. You can see how it's coming, look, as I cut against the bone, it's peeling away in front of me. And again, keep that borax going, suck up any liquids. Cut against the bone. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this, but this way works. I've got animals there that have been there nearly 20 years, lasted no problem at all, not in glass cases even. Although it's better to have a, a glass or plastic case because obviously the dust gets to them and the grease in the air. Right underneath here. Now this animal was accidentally killed yesterday, it ran underneath my car and rather than just leave it there with no respect and let other cars run over it I went back and picked it up and although we're not going to actually eat it because I am a meat eater, I don't mind saying that uh, my dog eats meat as well um, we won't waste it, we'll try and make something that's attractive and bring it back to life a little bit We won't, uh, it's had a long life this school anyway, it's an old uh, male animal. Uh, we'll, we'll give others some pleasure by being able to get close to this animal and try and set it up as realistically as we can. Here we go, look all the way down the nose now. We've got over the eyes, we've got over the cheeks. We're just going underneath the chin at the moment. Gradually peeling this meat away. Round the mouth now. The mouth we're going to have to pin the skin around the form we make. There we go. Under the lower jaw. Quite quick, quite simple, just be careful not to go through the skin of the animal itself. I only needed the one scalpel. Right, we're off the lower jaw now. Again, getting a bit wet, a bit damp. Get the borax on that to soak all that stuff up. One chap write to me a while ago, now I don't get many strange letters, but he felt that anything that died should be left there just to rot naturally, and it was disrespectful to do this to it. I think it's the other way around. I think uh, it's a shame to let something as lovely just be lost. If 
beautiful creature alive, and I'd rather see it alive in many ways, although these um, squirrels are a nuisance and they do rob the birds' nests and rob feeders and so on. They are just rats. But even so, beautiful little creature when it was alive. Now, there we are, that's the whole skin off, and we fold that back through again. And that's the squirrel mask. Done. There he is. Now that skin is quite clean, no meat in there at all, and it's all got the preservative on, so that would survive whatever now. Our next job is going to be to uh, make the body. We've got, to, we've got to reproduce both the head and the body. Now, I shan't leave the ball out a bit for the moment. Um, throw it on. Please. I'll take a bit of foam and we'll just look at the head onto a larger scalpel now. I'm going to use my knife to cut this and we'll cut a piece of foam, not a very large piece, just to be the same size as that head. So let's have a look about that. There we go. Cut the tablecloth. And we've got to be the same the other way round. It's quite small this head. Get the shape that way first. So we're looking down it first. And then we want the shape the other way. So it goes to the point there, with his nose. So it's uh, doing the projections, the side and the top. So, about there. A bit more of the back. And once we've done that, then we'll need to be rounded off. So we gradually slice. You do this with sandpaper if you want it. Carefully slice away. Getting the rounded edges. Until we have the same or near enough. it. So that's the head ready to go on later. Now we have to look at the body. Now I could make the body the same with um, a piece of foam, just like that. The legs were just going to stuff, so it doesn't matter anyway. But I'm going to take a bit of chicken wire to do the actual body this time. over there at the way. And if we fold this wire over, we should be able to squeeze it together to form the body shape. So you say you could make this just by cutting it with um, 
making a block of foam or you can do what I'm doing now and make a more pliable body because at least with this body I'm going to be able to bend it into any position I want when the animal's finished because I want it actually coming up and twisting round like that so that's what I'm going to do now I want him up on that perch something like that looking back at me just going to have a slight bend in his back and that I can do with something like this you see as with the body form, I'd have to cut the form and it'd be a lot more difficult. Now, once I've got that, I can bind it round with some fiberglass wool. The thin layer of this, the beauty of this wool is you can peel it apart. We can put that all the way around the body like that. The same the other side. But you want a thin layer of it. Take some ordinary wool. And just bind that. bits of wire that are sticking out out the way there we go now if we bind that quite tightly and we should end up with our body form so very simple tidy way to do it just tie it off Now we're also going to be needing a neck for that, so <coughs> so here's our, our body form. You want him just bending up a bit like that and across. So we're going to put him in. Now the neck comes out from which was the right shape. There we go. There. It's not a very large neck, not a very long neck. So that means that our head is going to fit onto there like that. Just so identical to the actual animal. To do that, I'll take a little bit of wire. Push it into here. And again, loop it at the end, as we did for the pheasant, push it right back again, and pull it back into the plastic, and we can then push that where it's going to be required here, in, down, through the chicken wire, and fix it back over inside here and 
and there's our basic squirrel shape. We'll put a bit more padding around there when we put him in. Now where do the eyes go? Right, here's where the eye is on the squirrel itself. And in this case we need to put these eyes in before we put the head over it, put the mask over it. It's easier and a better thing to do. So just mark where the eyes are going to go. Get them in the right place already. It should be just there. So I'm going to cut out a little area for the eyes. Just lift that out of the... Now. These eyes are going to have to fit into there like that. You see? Go through the same the other side. same position because the eyes must obviously be level with each other and that now is put that to one side get rid of some of the rubbish okay now we need to wire the arms the legs and feet so I've got my coil of wire and I'm just snipping off enough lengths to go through those four limbs and of course the tail. Now we're going to need to put some padding down the tail as well, especially at the top end. This is where our knitting needle is going to come in. So the first thing I'm going to do is thread this piece of wire all the way down the tail. right the way to the end until it actually comes out the end because we want to use this wire to bend the tail into shape later. Right so there's my wire through the tail it's coming out that much at the end and this much can go into the body that we've made. I need to get some of this fiberglass, little pieces at a time, and push that into the tail as far as I can get it. This is the actual stuffing part, it's the only stuffing part. Get in there, and that will hold the wire in place as well as give that tail a little bit more thickness at this end. Just roll it into a little tube. Push it down in there. So you've seen how to do a bird. You could have the squirrel and a blue jay or something up on a branch. You could do two together. There we are, that's that bit done. Now we need to do the same with the legs, but I'm not going to put the wire in first, I'm going to put the fiberglass in first with the legs. You can use that end of the knitting needle if you want. Really do pack it down in there. So if you don't do it now, it won't seem right later, and once you've got the thing onto the body, you have no chance. It's got to be done now. You can see how that's padding out in there, look. Right down to the bottom. It's important you do because, like I say, once you get the wire in there, can't do more.
Uh, we've pushed in the fiberglass all the way into these four limbs. Now we've got to get the wire and put those through the pores right through the fiberglass to hold those in position later and to actually hold the animal up. through the wool till it comes out don't depend on the skin there like that there we go leave enough to go into the base down here and make sure that really is well padded down into there it's going to help give support to that leg <coughs> right the wiring's now done you can see it's coming out of the feet at all four legs and they're coming out through here there's the wire for the tail now the next thing is to fit the body into that we'll start by pushing the tail up into here I think put it in and out of the way already Put it back through again, pull it back a bit, fit him over there, now to get the head into it, the mask over this head, I've got to go carefully, it's quite a delicate process. job on me. So now all the wires have been pushed up through the body, right through, bent back, pulled into it, which makes us ready to sew up the beast. Now the needle you require will depend on the thickness of the skin of the animal you're sewing up. Squirrel skin is fairly tough but I can get through with a standard darning needle. It's a standard sewing needle. Try not to get the fiberglass mixed up with it too much. About a quarter inch lengths of skin you take in. Push it right through. And whether you just sew round and round or whether you use a locking stitch is up to you. <clears throat> I usually do a couple of round and rounds and then finish with a locking stitch of every three. So that's about three that I've done now, which means that I'll go around and through the loop and pull that up tight, which means that as I work 
it's gradually tightening up all the way. If you do this carefully, the fur should just pull together and you won't even notice there's been a, a join there. Again up and through, pull it tight. that sewn up, cut that off, and there's our squirrel, just his bit of shaping up. So now I'm looking a bit more like when we first started on him. Pull his skin over a bit better, make his shape a bit nicer. There we go. I'm have to card those ears out a bit. Now, the next stage is to set him up <coughs> on our base. Now, how do those squirrel's legs work? <coughs> well, we've still got the body here. So you only have to look at the body to see how those joints would have moved. Arms go back here Put the stuff in right there's an elbow there now then we just need to drill the base in the positions we want him to be I have now drilled little holes in the stem here for the feet to go through, for the wire to go through for the feet. All I've got to do is fit it on. It all seems a bit dodgy at first but once the animal is fitted and readjusted and held on there, so for the moment we just bend the wire around, we'll do the finishing properly later. Now the hard part, and that's setting it up, and this is the bit that makes all the difference. You've got to get the angles of these legs and arms just right. Because he's got to be up there. Stepping up forward. playing with this until we get the angles 
just as we want them and just right. Well, here's our final piece. A little bit of, bit of fluffing up to do later and adjustments. But, uh, getting a little bit more life again, brought him back to life again. He just needs a bit of tidying up. Here's a virtually finished item. I've put on the uh, moss a little bit earlier for you. Usually I use silicone, but this time I've used PVA glue to glue it right on and make some of it a little more shiny if it's still wet. See the pins stuck around the eye holding the mask in place. The eyes are now all set and I've worked on the leg here to show the muscle structure better. Um, and the whole beast is just about done. We need to just let it dry off now and remove the pins and just tidy up the fur.